Hi, my name is Josef and I'm one of the developers of Fortis, a forecasting time series framework. Today, I will give you an overview of our code via code walkthrough. To not confuse you with some IDE or developing environment, I will go through the code directly here on GitHub. You can find all the necessary information here, but also in our documentation under API documentation. Here you can find the same information also with a direct link to the source code. You can assess our documentation under fortis.readthedocs.io. But let's go back to GitHub again. Here we have our four basic files on the top level of the repository. Besides the init.pi file, we have the run.pi file that you maybe already know from another tutorial where we demonstrate the case studies. The run.pi file then calls the opt-in pipeline, Python file. This you maybe also recognize from the pip package workflow tutorial. If you do not, I suggest you to also have a look into these two tutorials. And the fourth basic file on this top level is the dataset specific config file. You can see right here. Here we set the characteristics of the dataset we use in our study that Fortis needs to know to pre-process the data. Here we can see the characteristics that the user has to set for the specific data set. You maybe recognize some of these data sets as we also use some of them in our paper for once, but also in other tutorials in our documentation. And again, I suggest you to have a look into these tutorials also to get a deeper knowledge and better understanding about Fortis. Now, in the following, I will go through these sub-packages right here, step by step. The first sub-package I want to have a look into is the util sub-package. Here we have some check functions that, for example, checks arguments that can pass to Fortis and the helper functions. The helper functions, as the name uh, already suggests, um, contain some functions that help Fortis, for example, pre-process and execute the pipeline. For example, a function that sets all the seeds. We need to have reproducible results from the pipeline. The next Sub-package I want to go into is the preprocess sub-package. This preprocess sub-package sub contains all the files that we need to read in or load the data, preprocess it, also execute the feature engineering, then create the feature sets that we want to try out in Fortis, and also then save again the feature sets. All these functions are collected in the space dataset.pi file where, as I just explained first, some characteristics from the uh, config file get set right here. Then we check if the dataset was already pre-processed. If it is, we do not pre-process it again to save computational resources and time. If we did not already pre-process the dataset, then we start the pre-processing step. First we load the data, 
Then we do some general pre-processing as we always do in time series forecasting and execute the feature engineering step. Here in a feature engineering step, we also create the feature sets that we want to execute in the pipeline. In the feature engineering step, we compute and create additional features and informations we want to pass to the pipeline to support the forecasting models. This feature engineering gets executed in the feature adder Python file. In this Python file, we have two types of features, calendar features and statistical features. These both functions I just mentioned call another Python file or to be more precise, two more Python files, namely the date calendar feature and statistical features Python files. Here in these two Python files, the additional features get calculated and added to the feature sets or the data set. That's all for now for the pre-processing step. Next, I want to show you a very important and interesting sub-package, maybe the most important, the most important, the optimization sub-package. In this sub-package, we execute the hyperparameter optimization and also the testing of the optimized model on a test set. All that happens in this Optuna optim Python file, where we have the Optuna optim class. In this class, all the code is contained that we need for this optimization and testing. Within this class, we for once have the create new study method that creates a new Optuna study. Also, and this is one of the more important methods within this class, the objective function or method. In this method, we first load the model we want to use and then train this model and create forecasts on the validation set right here in the train while loop function that we call here. Then we calculate the objective value and at the end of this method we always return the current validation result. Also in this class we have some helping function that we need for the hyperparameter optimization and for the testing. For example a function that cleans up after exception happens or a function that calculates runtime statistics. When we go down further, we can see the generate results on test method. This is also a very important method as we test the optimized model here in this method. What's also in this method is the periodic refitting, which is a special feature that Fortis offers. offers. If you want to know more about periodic refitting, I suggest you to read our paper or the documentation. Here you can learn more about periodic refitting. Periodic refitting we can see here in this blocks of code. And when we go to the bottom of the method, we can see the run Octuna optimization method. This collects all the single parts I just explained and executes it there. So here we create a new study, then we optimize the hyperparameters where we call the objective function, and then at the end we test the optimized model on the test set. Another function 
you maybe saw is the plot result function. This function automatically creates a plot on the best working refitting frequency and saves this plot. That's all I want to talk about the optimization subpackage. So let's have a look at the next subpackage, which um, is also very important because without the subpackage, nothing would work. That's the model subpackage. In this subpackage, you can see a lot of Python files. But first, before we go deeper into these Python files, I want to show you a scheme which you can also see in our documentation under tutorials, advanced topics and how to integrate your own prediction models. Here you can see an overview over uh, the structure of the models. There we have the base model class that contains already specific methods and attributes that all the other models need. On a level lower, we have parent classes that contains method already predefined that all the child models belonging to this parent class needs. We have them for the very famous machine learning libraries like sklearn Start models, Torch, so PyTorch, and for TensorFlow. Below that, you can see some examples of models that we already implemented, that you can already use without further ado. In this parent class, we defined methods that all these models, here for example, sklearn need. And this is a big advantage of Fortins. Because for once we have these models that are already integrated that you can use, but also you can easily extend Fortis with your own models because you only have to define two more methods to add a new prediction model because all the other methods and code is already predefined in the parent class or in the base model. But let's step back to the repository. Here we have the already mentioned base model. This base model contains the methods that all the other models need, like a defined model method, a defined hyperparameter to tunes method, where we can has a dictionary that contains all the hyperparameters that Optima, Optuna should tune for the model. And a retrain, update, predict and train value method. Also, this gets passed to every sub-child of this base model. In suggest hyperparameters to Optuna, these hyperparameters get passed to Optuna and in a suggest all hyperparameters to Optuna, we can pass all hyperparameters to Optuna. Now let's have a look at one of the parent classes, for example, sklearn. In the sklearn model, we have the already mentioned methods implemented for retraining, updating and predicting the and the train value method that you already saw in the base model. For sklearn it's pretty much straightforward to train and predict. Let's have a look at the torch parent class. Torch or PyTorch is not that straightforward like sklearn, as you can see here. And this is why it is a nice advantage of Fortis 
that it already implements all the code that you need, for example, to train one epoch, to validate one epoch, to go through all the epochs. This is already everything implemented, so the user does it, has to implement it again. He can just take these methods and just has to create his own neural net that he wanna try out on time series forecasting. If you wanna create your own prediction model, we provide templates right here where we can see and already also again get explained what you have to implement by yourself in this template. But we also provide a video tutorial where we show you how to add your own forecasting models. And below that you can see all the models that we already implemented, that are ready to use for you. Then in the evaluation sub-package, we, we only have one function that is important. It's the get evaluation report, where we calculate different evaluation metrics, matrices that get returned to evaluate and determine how good the forecasts were. Also, we define the MAPE and SMAPE function right here in this Python file. So, that's basically it. I went through all the sub-packages sub -package, sub and I tried to explain to you what they do in more detail. The two sub-packages that you will probably need the most are the model and optimization sub-package, um, especially when you want to add your own forecasting models to the already existing models. If you want to understand the pipeline itself in more detail, I recommend to have a look into the Optin pipeline. Python file, here we have these run function that executes step by step the single sub packages I explained in this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this code walkthrough um, and hope you have fun and enjoy using Fortis. We are all always happy to have people contribute to Fortis and helping us to further develop this framework by, for example, adding additional models. Thank you and see you soon.